Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and we've had some major app updates in February. So I thought we'd talk about that again. We haven't talked about that since January. There's been updates to things such as Google Maps, Apple Music, Spotify, and more. This is the major app updates for mid-February 2023. Now, if you have an iPhone that has a telephoto zoom lens, this one may or may not apply to you. However, the app Halide has a new neural engine feature that allows you to actually have a zoom camera even though it doesn't technically exist on the phone. So if you have the Halide app, you actually have to subscribe to this, unfortunately. But if you have the app, you now have a zoom option. So we're zoomed in three times. We can go ultra wide, then we can zoom into 1x, 2x and 3x and just snap a photo and using the neural engine it actually clarifies this and it's built right in now of course you can try this out if you want i just wanted to try it out myself it seems to work really well and is very clear so it's nice that they're actually giving this as sort of a feature punching into that sensor using the neural engine to clean up clean up the image so that's great and i think if you use telephoto zoom this may be a way around having to buy a more expensive phone to experience that now, within Apple Music, there's been some updates as well, and that's because the Super Bowl is in just a couple days. So in the United States, you may already get a pop-up, and that pop-up looks like this. So if you go into your music app the first time, if you haven't seen this, it says get ready for the Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show. And then it has an interview with Rihanna and much more. So you can go in here and see all of that if you're interested. And there's also some new wallpapers for that as well. You can find those in the Shazam app. So if we go into the app Shazam, let me go over here. We'll go into Shazam. Now, one thing to know is if you get a pop-up for that Apple Music update with the Rihanna music you'll actually see that in shazam however it doesn't show up again for me but let me show you what it looked like and if we go into my photos here i took a screenshot you actually have a free watch face and wallpaper and i have the watch face here you can see it there that's what it looks like but that's available however it disappeared for me now maybe it'll come back later but it's in the shazam app itself so if you get that pop-up and you want those make sure that you actually get those right away within that app now, Spotify also has a small update. So in Spotify, if you use that app and you're within a playlist, you can now exclude that playlist from your recommendations with a button if you subscribe to Spotify. So you'll have an option that looks like this, as you can see, and it allows you to exclude those from your taste profile. So that's something that's all new and may be helpful for some. Some people have told me the Watch app has been updated as well. However, I haven't seen any difference there, but let me know if it's updated for you. Now, the other day, Google announced major updates to Google Maps with a lot of new things that may not be available yet, but are coming soon. One of those has to do with the Dynamic Island, allowing for turn-by-turn -turn direction within the Dynamic Island, as well as live activities on the lock screen. Those will show directions and estimated times of arrival, but that will be available in the future. However, they're starting to roll out a new immersive view in select cities. So that immersive view will have sort of what Apple has with flyovers, but then give a lot more information. This is now rolling out in London, LA, New York, San Francisco, and Tokyo with more cities rolling out soon. And you can see more about that on their website. So there's sort of a way to zoom into the city, get more detail about the building, and even go inside the building in many different areas. You can start navigation and walk around a city using augmented reality as well. And there's also more information regarding things such as EV charging stations and glanceable directions and more. So you'll see more and more of these updated in the future, glanceable directions. They're not all available yet in all available cities, but some of them are showing up for some people. I haven't seen it yet on iPhone, but let me know if you're seeing it as it's really nice to be able to sort of zoom into a building and then go inside that restaurant maybe and see what it looks like overall. So in the future, we'll be able to actually go into a restaurant and see what it looks like. Right now, we can just see the latest photos, but they've stitched together those different photos so that you can sort of walk through different restaurants and different businesses. So I can't wait until that's more available. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to read more about what's coming very, very soon. And if you have any of these features, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. The other day, Microsoft also showed off integrations with AI and different changes, and they're integrating ChatGPT and OpenAI directly into Microsoft Bing Search. Now, this isn't available just yet. You can sign up to try it out on their website. If you want to do that, just go to bing.com 
And you'll see here, if we go to Bing, you can see introducing the new Bing, ask real questions, get complete answers. So you can learn more about this and then open and join. So you can try it out yourself, see what it's like, and it's integrated with OpenAI. So that'll be different to see that maybe integrated with AI and see what Google does in response with overall Google search. So that's something that's been updated and we'll know more about that in the future with their apps as well. Also, Microsoft said that they're finally working on Apple Silicon native Skype apps for M1 and M2 processors. So far, you could only use that through Rosetta, and now it looks like they're going to finally have a native app if you're using Skype. Twitter got an update this past week that now allows more characters if you're subscribed to Twitter Blue. So if we go into Twitter, you can see Twitter themselves had a post where they had more words, more words, and so on, and you can see up to 4,000 characters. Now, not everyone is going to see this looking this way. It'll just say read more after 280 characters, but that's something you can have if you have Twitter Blue. Now WhatsApp gets some updates this past week with status. So there's an all new status change. Some are not necessarily new, but they've been improved quite a bit. So if you're using WhatsApp, status is now a popular way to share ephemeral updates with friends and close contacts and WhatsApp. So they'll disappear within 24 hours and they can include photos, videos, GIFs or GIFs, text and more. So just like personal chats and calls, WhatsApp status is protected by end-to-end -end encryption and you can share privately and securely according to WhatsApp. So there's voice statuses, status reactions, visual link previews and more. So this is something you can read about on the WhatsApp page that they rolled out. If you're using WhatsApp, like most of the world is, that's available now. Also, according to WA Beta Info, WhatsApp is working on new features to transcribe audio into text. Apparently it's already in the latest beta, but it should roll out to everyone a little bit later. Now, if you're someone that uses Netflix regularly, Netflix continues to crack down on people sharing passwords. This is something that they've been pushing in the United States and outside the U.S. now in Canada, New Zealand, Spain, and Portugal. So they don't want you sharing passwords. They want each family or household to buy their own subscription. Now, I personally only have it within my own home, but I'm curious how many of you actually share passwords and whether or not this will get rid of their overall business model as it seems Seems many people do share passwords. However, it is against their terms of service. I personally never have done that because I feel like content should be paid for, but I'm curious what you do overall on your devices. Now, if you use Craft like I do, I actually use that instead of the Notes app to take notes for things like this video. They had a major update this past week, and that update includes new navigation, especially on the Mac, and also some updates with navigation changes, as you can see there, and updates with the code editor itself. So that's something they've improved and is updated now. So this is great. They continually improve this. And one thing that I personally like is that they continually focus on notes. So instead of Apple focusing on a bunch of different apps, you have one app developer that that's their entire business is to focus on making notes the best they can be. So that's why I typically support apps like that. Now, many of us have used Uber. I did when I was in CES at Las Vegas. Some people use it every day. But if you're an Uber driver, there's some new updates coming very soon that may already be here that allow you to use Uber on your display of an Apple CarPlay device. So instead of having to use Uber on your phone and then actually go over to your device and then use it maybe on CarPlay using Apple Maps or Google Maps, it'll now be integrated into the Uber driver app. So this is something that's rolling out now according to TechCrunch, and you can see what it looks like here. The game Myst has been out for a long time and originally was on iOS. However, there's a new remastered version from the creators of it, Cyan, and this is available now. So you can see, you can try it out, and then there's in-app purchases if you wanna keep going, but it's been remastered fully on iOS and iPad OS. So that's available now and it's under Mist Mobile as far as the overall name. I'll link it in the description below though. In the future, Apple is going to have to open up iOS to allow third-party app stores and sideloaded apps based on rulings in the European Union. And it seems like that may happen in the United States and elsewhere based off of many antitrust cases that may happen very soon. Google and Firefox are now preparing their own browser engines for iOS and iPad. So currently, when you use a different browser other than Safari, you're actually using Safari with a skin on top of it. So Chrome is really just Safari with Google's own skin on it. The same is true for Firefox and any other browser on the iPhone and iPad. But in order to comply with that new ruling, Apple will have to allow other developers to use their own engines for their developed apps. So 
you could see Chrome with their engine, Firefox with their own engine, and it will work completely differently. We could see this very soon as Google and Firefox are already working on it. So that's something we should see probably within the next year or so, and maybe with iOS 17. There isn't a definite date yet, but it seems like something that's going to take place. And so that's all of the major app updates. One thing I'm really waiting for is for Apple to make a Final Cut Pro version for iPad. We don't have any Pro apps on the iPad Pro versions. So we have DaVinci Resolve, we have different things like LumaFusion, but we don't have any Apple Pro apps such as Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro. I hope those are coming very soon. Hopefully we'll see those very soon as well. And of course we're waiting for iOS updates and we'll talk more about that in our weekend follow-up that's just in a day or so from now. If there's anything else you'd like to know in the app update videos, maybe something else I should cover, Mac apps or other things more in general, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course it will be linked in the description as it always is, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.